Hello, and welcome again to our church school lesson. We pray and hope that everyone is safe and warm and in a place of comfort. As we uh, prepare to study this week's lesson, we're asked that we pause for just a moment to ask God's blessing for this lesson. Will you allow me to do that? Dear Lord, here we are once again getting ready to share this lesson with others. Now, Lord, we ask that you give us a receiving heart and listening ears so that someone else might be able to have a better understanding of this lesson. I ask, Lord, that you remove me from myself and you do the teaching, Lord. Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, we ask a special blessing upon the bereaved and sick everywhere. We ask, Lord, that you will guide our leaders of this country, our states, and our cities, Lord. We need your guidance. So, Lord, we thank you. And, Lord, please bless everyone who might view this lesson and let it be a blessing to them. And, again, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it's good to be back and I pray my prayer is that you all are safe and warm and comfortable. We have another uh, great lesson on obedience and today we're studying out of the we're still using the Union Gospel Press uh, Sunday School book and it's such it has been such a blessing for me to understand more fully about obedience and God's word. Now, let's look at what we're going to be studying uh, on today. As you can see, we're at lesson number 12. We have one more lesson in this quarter. This is lesson 12 from the Union Gospel Press. And our uh, topic for today is obedience among neighbors. We're still at the time of 1445 BC. The place is Mount Sinai. We're studying out of Leviticus today, chapter 19. We're starting with verse 9 through 18. Then it goes to verse 33 through 37. And we'll be using the New Living Translation as our readings. And we'll refer sometime back to the King James. Okay, we have our golden text is from the 18th chapter of the 18th verse of the 19th chapter of Leviticus, and it reads, Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against a fellow Israelite, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. And as we see, our lesson has three outlines. The first one is compassion for the less fortunate and that's verse 9 through 14 and then we have the second outline is compassion in attitudes and that's verse 15 through 18 of leviticus 19 and our last outline the third one is compassion in personal dealings and that's our last scriptures which is 33 through 37. now as i prepared to as I was studying this lesson and even at the beginning of made me wonder well who who is considered our neighbor it's not just the person that we meet that live next door or across the street from us but our neighbors are people that we meet every day in life in this walk of life whether we're out shopping or whether we're going to work or whether we're at the school, even at church, those are our neighbors. And our lesson, God is still talking to Moses, giving him instructions on for the Israelites as how they should treat their neighbors because they're not going to be at Mount Sinai uh, much longer because after so long, they're going to be proceeding to the promised land. And God was making them giving them these commands and laws so that they would become a great nation because he loved them just that much that he wanted them to be able to get along and 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 show respect for each other 
And this is what our lesson is all about. It's, it says obedience among neighbors. So now let's look at our first outline scripture reading. And as you can see, this is compassion for the less fortunate. Now, we have a lot of less fortunate uh, people in our society today. Some of them are really worthy, that need our help, and then there are those that are just go around conning people. But look what this, uh, these commandments that he gave Moses for the Israelites. It says, when, your har when you harvest the crops, of your land do not harvest the grain along the edge of the field and do not pick up what the harvesters drop verse 10 he says it is the same with your grape crops do not strip every last bunch of grapes from the vines and do not pick up the grapes that fall to the ground leave them for the poor and the foreigners living among you. I am your God. And then verse 11, do not steal, do not deceive or cheat one another. Amazing. Do not bring shame on the name of your God by using it to swear falsely. I am the Lord. Verse 13, do not defend, defraud, or rob your neighbor. Do not make your hired workers wait until the next day to receive their pay. And in verse 14, it says, do not uh, insult the deaf, or the, the deaf or cause the blind to stumble. You must fear your God. I am the Lord. Now, as we open up, and this is talking about compassion for the less fortunate, and what he's telling them is a lot of uh, practices that we could use today in our everyday life, because so many times we fail to realize that there are those that are less fortunate than us that really need our help. And in this verse, in our first verse, verse number uh number nine where it says he's talking about it says help for the needy this is what is being covered and he's trying to let them know like he told them he says look the king james says when you when you reap the harvest of your land thou shall not wholly reap the corners of thy fields neither shall thou gather the gleaning of the harvest in other words he's telling them now Listen, when you come in and you harvest uh, your crops, those that are that are over in the corner and those that fall on the ground, don't pick them up. I want you to leave that for the for the less fortunate, for the needy people that will come through and pick up afterwards just enough so that they could survive on. And this is what he's telling them. Don't don't go back. And look in verse 13 in the King James, it says, And thou shalt not glean thy vineyards, neither shalt thou gather every grape of the vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and the strangers. Listen, he ends it, I am the Lord your God. See, he's putting that signature on there to let uh, the Israelite know, I'm the Lord. I gave these instructions and these are the commands that I want you to live by. He even told when the gleaners come in and they're picking the grapes off the vine, he said, don't strip them totally naked. Leave some. And if they fall on the ground, don't pick them up. Leave that for those that, for the poor, so that those people could come in and, and gather some of the leftovers the remnants, I believe that's what is said in another passage, that they pick up the remnants. That means the leftovers, because that would help them. If you were the owner of a, a vineyard or you had a great harvest, you had more than enough. Because a lot of times these farmers or the harvesters, they were, uh, that was their way of income. So they had more than enough to share because, you know, after all, poor people, are always with us. We, they, everybody won't be rich. There are uh, there are those that are among us right now that are in need. We're getting ready for the Thanksgiving season, and uh, some people don't even have enough to feed their children. 
just so that they could have a meal for that day. But in this case, the Lord is teaching us even today how we are to share and uh, provide for those that are in need, not not the greedy. We we're not we we're not to keep making greedy people fat. We were we're here to help those that that don't. This is the Lord gave these commandments to leave grain for the poor. He said that that fell to the ground. Don't go back and pick it back up. Leave it down there. Leave it for them so that they would have something that they could gather and have to eat. And that's what his, his, these uh, scriptures are telling us, like in verse number 11, and it says, look, ye shall not steal, nor neither deal falsely, neither lie to one another. In our reading in verse 11, it said that, he said, don't steal. See, the new living just made it plain. Don't steal, don't go about stealing from people and taking things, because he's, He's letting us know. He says, he want you all to have integrity in deeds and words. What you say should be um, should be able to hold up and and have things be have integrity. Don't just lie to just lie. No, he's telling them. They saying, don't look. Don't steal. Don't go take somebody else's property and and what they worked hard for and try to sacrifice just to get it. Don't steal. Die, don't even steal because. When I was growing up, my mother would say, if you lie, you'll cheat. And if you cheat, you'll steal. And you know, that makes a lot of sense because it's, it's just where you're such, you're such uh, uh, a crook till you do anything to please yourself. But in this case, God is letting them know, don't do it. He says, he said, and then dealing falsely, um, he says, falsely dealing, falsely stealing. He says, and lying to each other. You know, a lot of people will will take what you have and and, and be conning you to give it to you. Uh, in case when you when you falsely accuse somebody, he's telling them, don't do that. Don't don't steal. Don't deal falsely. In other words, cheating people. I'm gonna cheat them out of this because that's that's dealing falsely. And he says, and then stealing, and then lie about it. Do you know how many lies people have told that they now they live a whole life of lie? Because if you tell one lie, you got to keep repeating that lie to tell something else. And somewhere down the line, you're going to get totally confused. You're not going to be able to repeat that lie over and over. So if you speak the truth, you don't have a problem repeating the truth. And that's what he's telling them about don't steal. And then look at verse uh, where it says verse number, I believe we have number 12, where it says, And ye shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shall thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Now that's the King James. Ours says, this says simply, just tell you, do not bring shame on my, on the name of your God. The Lord is telling me, don't shame me. Don't go out there and shame my name. He says by using it to swear falsely. He says, I am the Lord. That means I'm God. I know this. You know, a lot of times we are, we are, uh, I think it was when, uh, Cain and his brother and, uh, he, uh, the brother cheated the, the, the brother out of his birthright. So he took, he made the suit. And then when he took it in to the father, he lied to his father because the father said, well, well, now, where did you, where did you get this from? Well, how did you get this meat so fast? And he said, uh, the Lord provided. He lied and used the Lord's name. This is what this is saying. Don't swear by the Lord's name. Don't use the Lord and lying or to or to take from somebody else. Oh, you know, we have in a day and time we live, people will say, and the Lord told me to tell you that if you sow this seed into this, you will reap a harvest. That's not what God told. Don't use God to benefit your thievery or your lying. No, don't use, that's what he's telling them. Don't, he says, because my, my remember my name, I'm God, I'm the Lord. I am the Lord. He kept referring to this a lot of time in our study tonight because he wanted to emphasize, tell them, I am the Lord. God sees everything and he knows everything. And he was telling them that, don't swear by my name. You know, when I was growing up, you would say, oh, golly, my mom would say, golly, don't be using the Lord's name in vain. In this case, he's talking about how to 
we maneuver and fast talkers will say, you know, well, God, God going to bless you if you do this. And the God told me to tell you that that's not, that's falsely using God's name. And he's saying, them, tell them, don't do it. Cause you know, you're dealing with your neighbors and you're dealing with foreigners. Don't try to beat people out of something and using my name to do it. And then in verse 13, look what he says in the King James. It says, thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. For the wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. What he's telling them, a lot of times people work, they hired people to do day work. And they promised to pay them at the end of the day. God is telling them, don't defraud those people pay them don't 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 wait till the next day pay them because you had an agreement that you were gonna pay them when the job was complete at the end of the day you know we have a lot of day workers here in the united states and they'll be standing on the corners waiting for somebody to come along and say they need so many uh people to help and to work and then they'll promise to pay them so much at the end of the day that same thing was going on back in this time before israel moved on to the uh promised land and god was telling them don't rob them that's robbery you promise to pay that person you pay them if you hire someone to come in and uh clean your house and 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 do the laundry and then you promise that okay i'm gonna pay you uh two hundred dollars and when they finish that work those people are expecting their money and then if you come along and say well i don't like the way you did this i don't like the way you did that you're robbing them just because you don't want to pay them and you know they've done a good job and god is telling them don't do that he says don't 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 in other words remember these are your neighbors treat them like you would want to be treated that's like us today we do not we don't look at it as as uh as our neighbor but they are and we i want to treat you the way i treat you i want you to treat me just like that and that's what he's telling them that what they shouldn't do and then in verse 14 where it says thou shall not curse the death this is king james nor put a stumbling block before the blind but shall fear thy god I am the Lord. There he goes. He's reverting back to I am God. He's telling them. Now, you know, the people with a handicap or people that are blind, they depend on us for a lot. There are people that in this day, they were blind and people would make fun of them and they would put something out there and they would stumble and fall and they thought it was funny. God is telling them, no, that's not funny. That is not how you treat your brother. That is not how you treat your neighbor. He says, I want you to have respect for everyone. A handicapped person shouldn't be mistreated under no circumstances. He shouldn't have to be uh, pushed and, and uh, put down because he's blind. Because, you know, a lot of time back, even today, people like to make fun of other people and they enjoy that they want to they want to see people stumble and fall but in this case god is telling them don't do it no this is not how we we don't do that he says and then uh look at verse our um uh, about that stumbling block how he don't you know just because a person is handicapped and you're up moving and you're moving fast don't run over them. Don't, don't disrespect them. A lot of times they're going to the same place you're going and it's not going to hurt you one iota to take time and let them pass. And it matter, matter of fact, maybe we ought to try to assist them. That's why they have handicapped uh, parking spaces. I've seen people jump out of their cars and they just as healthy and it's not nobody else in the car. And, and they park in the handicap spot and a person come along that need the spot he got to park at the back of the parking lot. See, that's wrong. That's not for if you are healthy and you don't have a, a disability. Leave those spots for the people that really need it. It's the same thing what God is trying to tell them about how they should treat the um, the misfortunate and those that are uh, are sickly or uh, uh, in uh, poor health. Okay. Now let's look at our next outline. And this one is compassion in attitudes. You know, your attitudes can uh, make you or break you. And this, these are our scriptures, verse 15. 
And it reads, do not twist justice in legal matters by favoring the poor or being partial to the rich and powerful. Always judge people fairly. Verse 16, do not spread slanderous gossip among your people. He says, do not stand idly by when your neighbor's life is threatened. Look, he's ending this with, I am the Lord. Verse 17 says, do not uh, nurse hatred in your heart for any of your relatives. Don't hold no grudge against your family. Confront people directly so you will not be found held guilty for their sins. Number 18, he says, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against a fellow Israelite, but love your neighbor as yourself. Here we go. I am the Lord. Now, as you can see, it's talking about attitudes, compassion in your attitudes. Don't, the first one said, don't twist justice. He's telling them, he says, don't twist justice in legal matters by favoring the poor or being partial to the rich and powerful. Just because a person is poor, when, they are, when there's a case, they should be treated fairly. If the rich is, has a case before them, they should be treated fairly. Don't, let, don't favor the rich because they got money and they got more high powerful lawyers and where the poor has an appointed a court appointed lawyer they both should be treated fairly on the same level when it comes to justice if they're guilty they are guilty no matter whether they're poor or rich and then he says he says always judge people fairly this is the point that i'm trying to emphasize just i'm i just because i have five dollars and then this person over here got five million and we're both standing and accused of the same thing. The one with the five million shouldn't get preference over, over me with the five. If we've sinned and we've broken the law, the same justice should apply to both of us. And this is what he's telling Israelite. Be fair. Don't, don't judge a person. Don't favor the poor and just say, well, we'll just let them off. No, when you're guilty, you're guilty. Or the rich, or where he can pay his way out. No, God said, don't do that. He's telling the Israelites, okay, you're getting ready to go and you're going to be a great nation. And I want you to be fair with everyone. Don't just uh, do people, you think money, just because they got money, you could, you could profit from it. No. This is what he's telling me. He says, don't judge with favoritism. That's what he's trying to tell them. Don't judge with favoritism. No, don't show favoritism. And a lot of times we do that. We get caught up in, well, I like her a little bit better. I think, I think I'll just let her slide. No, 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 no. Everybody's got to pay the price. When you are, when you sin, there should be no difference in a person's status that make them better. And then look at verse number 16. It says, do not spread, it says, slanderous gossip among the your people. You know how people do. They, 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 we're friends today. We fall out. And then they'll go run tell something, something on me that's totally not true. But they're so angry that they'll gossip. And then they, they take it. Somebody else take it. They tell two people, they tell four people, and that's spreading gossip. That's slanderous. Don't do it. Don't, don't get caught up in spreading something that you don't know every fact about it. And God is telling even Israel to do this. Don't spread slanderous gossip among our, your people, in, in your people. Wherever you are, and there are people there, they are your people. He says, do not stand idly by when your neighbor's life is threatened. He says, because I am God. If someone is threatening your neighbor's life, and he's telling them, don't just stand by and drop your head. Well, I'm not in that. I'm going to let them go ahead on. That's not, that's not none of my business. I don't want to be in that. No, God says, do not stand idly by if your neighbor's life is threatened. Do something. Go get some help. Uh, call. If we such we have such modern days, we can dial nine one one in a flash, 
And don't, don't let someone's life be taken and you stand by and watch it. This is what he's telling them over uh, 3,000 years ago. He's telling us today. You don't have to run out there and get in a fight with someone, but you can do something in the background that will save their life. And then look, he says in verse 17, he says, Do not nur nurse hatred in your heart for any of your relatives. This is... <laughs> That th this is one that I think everybody says. And look, in, in the King James, it reads, Thou, sh thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. He's telling them, now this is your, talking about your brothers and your sisters in your family line. Don't have hatred in your heart for them. He says, even God know that we we all don't get along. We're going to fall out behind the least little things. And he's telling these Israelites, don't have hatred in your heart for your brother. That's your brother and your sister. Don't be so put out with them too. I just hate them. I don't even want to be around them. That is a sin. And God says, don't do that. You are sinning against God because of the hatred you have for your own brother in your heart. He says, don't do it. He says, and then he says, confront people directly. He's telling Israel, just like he tell us, go to them, discuss it. If there's a disagreement or something that you didn't like, go directly to that person. Because guess what? You gonna be held, you gonna be held guilty for not approaching it and solving it right then. Okay. Now somebody might say, yeah, but you don't know. They don't, they don't want to listen to me. They won't listen to me. But if you make that one step, God will make two. If your heart is right and not going there to point out that you did this to me and you hurt me. No, you want to get it settled and, and come to some type of agreement and offer an apology and go on from there and leave that there. Don't, don't go around and say, well, I tried to apologize, but she wouldn't do it. You did your part like God told you, you do it. And he's telling the Israelites the same thing. Don't have no hatred in your heart for your brother. And then he says, And thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. And when you go and you tell them and they don't want to receive it, you, like I just said, you've done your part. It's up to them now. And they'll be guilty of their own sin. That guilt won't be on you. All right. And then our last one in that verse 18, this is, Do not seek revenge. He's telling Israel, like, when someone do you wrong, oh, don't, don't sit up and I'm going to get them. I'm going to, you know that that eats away at your soul when you have that kind of revenge and a grudge that you just go, I need to get them. I, it's like little children. You ever notice children, they play and they play their best friends. They have a falling out. Sometimes they get in a little tussle. And if you leave them alone just for a little while, you look around, they'll be back playing and having a good time like it's nothing. You know why? Because they didn't seek revenge over a grudge. Sometimes you got to let them just, those little kids work it out. And he's telling them, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against a fellow Israelite. So in other words, he's telling them, don't hold a grudge. Don't, don't go get a gang of people on your side because you want them to think like you. No, don't hold a grudge. He's just telling them, he said, these are, he said, but love your neighbor. Your neighbor is also your family members, your immediate family. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. I must love my family just as much as I love myself. And he says, you know why? He says, because I am the Lord. He's letting them know, uh, Moses, tell them I'm the Lord. And this is what I want you to do. I am the Lord. Follow my instructions and, and, and do what I tell you because God is getting ready to make them a great nation. And he wanted them to have some laws and guidelines to live by. He didn't want them running around just falling apart because, you know, they're going to have problems anyway from outsiders. But in this case, he wants them. He says, we do not have the right to seek even a... a uh, revenge, we must deal with uh, grudges that cause us to seek revenge. We need to search ourselves. Don't have these grudges where people 
we hold these grudges and can't get, we can't even function because we're, we're not doing what God has given us to do. And that's to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Okay, now let's go to our last outline and we'll be uh, ready to uh, close our lesson out. Now, this is to my compassion uh, in personal dealings. Now, remember that Israelites, they had a lot of inward people with them. So they were, everybody wasn't the Israelites. Some of them came in from outside. And let's read our uh, last few scriptures here. It says, do not take advantage of foreigners who live among you in your land. Treat them like native-born Israelites and love them as you love yourself. Remember that you were once foreigners living in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord, your God. 30 35, do not use, do not use dishonest standards when measuring lengths, weights, or volumes. 36, your scales and weights must be accurate. Your containers measure, for measuring dry materials or liquid must be accurate. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. In verse 37, you must be careful to keep all my decrees and regulations by putting them into practice. I am the Lord. Now, as we close in our lesson, he's talking about compassion and personal dealings. A lot of them were, were merchants. They had buy, they would trade and sell and and, and had goods like the, the, the harvest and the grapes and all of that. So they could sell to people traveling in and out and, and sell to each other. And he's telling me, he says, do not mistreat strangers when they sojourn uh, with you in this land. Uh, he says, uh, and don't vex them. I think the King James says, don't vex them. In other words, when strangers come in, don't mistreat them. Don't uh, beat them out. They're going to put their finger on the scale when they go to buy something. Because, see, they know who, who's there every day. So every now and then, do the daily business dealings, somebody, a stranger, will come in and purchase something. And they were uh, there were certain merchants that would cheat and, and raise the price of things on people they didn't recognize every day. So this is what he's telling them. Don't, don't do that because, remember, you were a, a foreigner in a, you were a stranger in a foreign land. And this is, remember how the Egyptians treated you? He wanted them to, look, don't do this to people. He wanted them to treat people fairly so that, that when they come through, you wouldn't have that guilt on your hands of, 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 uh, putting your finger on the scale because I think it even said he says when and treat them like they were uh, born Israelites and love them as you love yourself remember you were once foreigners living in the land of Egypt and then he says I am the Lord your God he says do not do not use dishonest standards when measuring weights lengths and, and, and in other words when you see a stranger coming don't uh, don't change your measuring stick. Use the same measuring stick accurately. Use the same weights on a scale. Don't put so many weights on the scale and then you're putting your finger on it to measure out what the goods are worth. God is saying, don't do that. We do that today. We 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 buy things like we... Some, some people are fortunate to go in and could buy a brand new car and pay cash. Those of us that don't have that kind of financing, we need them to finance the car. Do you know they, they tack on so much more to buy that car? It's unreal. They are cheating us. They add things that are not necessary. But if you walked in there and said, I'm paying cash, they treat you totally different than when you have to buy on credit. These same rules God is telling the Israelites that they must show God's love at all times even to non-born Israelites. And then he's telling them like, he says, don't, don't use this understanding. And you know, in other words, going to cheat you like the financing of a car. And then in verse 36, he says, your scales, you got to make sure, don't adjust the scales 
on non-Israelites. Uh, Use the same scares, the same requirements. If we're going to buy a house or whatever, the same requirements should apply to those that are doing it on credit and those that are going to pay cash. As a matter of fact, a lot of times people that pay for cash get a big discount where people paying on credit, you don't get no discount. So this is what he, that same mental uh, thinking about buying and selling was way back in Israelite days. And this is what God is telling them. Don't do it. We need to recognize that when we go out to buy things, be very careful. Pay attention to the used car salesman's attitude. Be careful. And if they don't talk right, go to the next one. And this is what God has given us an ability to see things and to hear things and put it together better. But when you are traveling and you are moving to and fro, you have to pay for what it is right then to meet your needs. And then he says in the last verse, you must be careful to keep all my decrees. He wanted them to remember everything. These, these commands and, and guidelines was God's love that he wanted us to live together in harmony, just like the Israelites. Like when he was telling about the crops and things, he said if someone came, it was okay if someone was hungry and passed through uh, the, the grapes of the vineyard and they ate some. He said that would be all right. But he didn't tell them to go there and get a, a, a bring them a, a 55 gallon drum and fill it up and then keep moving. No, that's stealing. Don't do that. We don't do that today. We must remember God gave his people his statutes and his uh, judgment so they would have a just and fair society. And that's what he's telling us today. We must treat each other like we love ourselves and we love our family members. And if, before I go, let me read this conclusion from another writer. And I like to share it because it's, it puts a, the, 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 it puts the closing in our little lesson tonight. He says, all the precepts, God's statutes and judgments, presented in this week's lesson are supported by the powerful statement that God repeated several times in this text, and it is, I am the Lord. Our God's law direct us to thinking about others. God commanded the Israelites to observe and obey all his uh, revealed commands and right and regulations. It is true that a society without proper laws and that treats people unfairly will succumb under its own weight. Unfortunately, today Christianity is getting a bad rap because of those who don't show compassion and love for their fellow man. Our compassion flows from God's compa uh, compassion. Our concern, love, empathy, and others come from our experience with the merciful God who deserves our obedience. And that's our lesson. I want to say thank you again. And I pray and hope that these little lessons will be benefits to you and help you have a better understanding of these little lessons. And until the next time. I want to say, if you enjoy these lessons, uh, subscribe, hit the like button. And if you like, leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you all because I'm not doing this to make myself famous. I just want to share the word of God with everyone. And until we meet the next time, may God bless and keep you richly.